Profit Passion Java. In our last session, we just went over dreams, and now we will be going into visions. If you haven't shared the link yet, please do so right now, as the man of God is going to continue to give us more insight on today's topics. And without further ado, let's welcome back Passion Java. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for such another wonderful time in the Holy Ghost. Help us and equip us with your knowledge that we may be empowered in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Uh, let us open our Bibles again in the book of uh, Job 33, verse number 15. And also, we are going to deal with other, other visions. The Bible says, God speaks to every man when a man sleeps, when a man slumbers, in a dream, in a vision, in different ways God speaks. We are going to deal with the visions right now. Amen. Uh, Job speaks about visions of the night. Visions of the night. Meaning there are visions of the day. So we are visions of night and we are visions of the day. What are the differences? The difference between vision of the night and vision of the day is that vision of the night you have a vision in a dream. Like I explained when I was talking about dreams. You have a dream. In your dream, you have a vision. You can see a vision while you are dreaming. Are we together? Then vision of the day, it's a vision that, let's say you are praying. And in your prayer, you just close your eyes for two minutes. And you, you, you focus until you begin to see pictures, images, and maybe angels or things that are physical, that represent spiritual things. Amen. Jeremiah was told by God to look, and he looked in a vision, and the Bible says he saw a branch. And God says, what do you see? He says, a branch. And God says, you did see well, but what you are seeing is not a branch. It is my word that I'm about to perform. A vision is when you see things that are physical representing something spiritual. Are we together? Yeah. Then we have what we call open visions. Closed visions are like, you have to close your eyes to see. Open vision, it appears, you, you see as you are seeing everybody right now. The way you are seeing me, that's where you see, how you will see an open vision. An open vision, it takes people with a powerful mind. Remember we spoke about a powerful mind in the dream course. When we talk about a powerful mind, you are able to see both worlds at the same time. You can see in the physical and you can see in the spiritual. It affected me when I was young, when I was going to school. Because I would look at my teacher and while I'm, 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 I'm learning in the class, I would see what happened in her life last night. Sometimes I am looking at people and I'm seeing a snake on top of someone's head. I'm seeing a human being and I'm seeing a snake at the same time. It's called an open vision. It's where you can see things clear. You just look at someone and you see bees coming out from the mouth of someone. So you can, you can have a balance of two, the natural and the spiritual at the same time. But it takes someone with a powerful mind, a spiritual mind, a, a, a mind that is able to balance both worlds. Some people, they see to an extent that they are confused, like Paul. Paul says, I don't know if I was taken to heaven with my flesh or it was my spirit. 
Are we together? It's, it's a level that it starts from visions in a dream. That's first level. And some people, they, they, they experience that. Then you move to second level where you have visions of the day. From visions of the night to visions of the day is when you are active. You can just quickly close your eyes and begin to see visions. Or you slumber. Remember when God speaks to a man when man sleeps or slumber. You, you just slumber a little bit or you, you, you nap for three minutes. It used to happen to me years ago when I come from school, I'm at my fish tank just looking at my fish and I just feel like sleeping. Just feel like I need to, to rest. Then boom, and I start seeing things in the realms of the spirit. It's, it's, it's the gift that will be growing from one level to another level. Because some people, they are controlled by gift. Some people, they control the gift. So when you are waiting to sleep to see a vision, the gift is still operating over you. When you are praying to see, like you can actually ask God questions. And then you close your eyes and in a vision he speaks to you. It means you have started uh, developing yourself in the gift. You are now growing in the gift. Gifts, they don't grow. But we grow in the gift. So the more time you spend... Investing yourself, your time in the gift determines how much you grow in the gift. Some people, they have a gift of dreams here. Yes, some have a gift of vision. Some have a gift of prophecies, healing. But they don't practice their gift. The more you practice, the more you grow in the gift. Are we together? And then you move now from speaking in tongues into closing your eyes to see. And you get now into a place where Anytime you want to see in the realms of the spirit, you can see. It's a choice. It's a decision. Like I, I many times decide to see in the spirit. Like my newly born baby is um, one month old now. He will just look at a pillar like this. You try to turn him, he pulls back. He's just... So one day I had to check, is there an angel there? And there was nothing. As I really thought, I think there should be an angel. The way he is always looking there, there should be an angel, but there was no angel. So you must, uh, you must be able to grow your gift until you come to a place where you can control the gift. Then you grow to an extent that you become the gift. I did a teaching about, I, I wrote a book called uh, Becoming a Gift. And in that book, I was explaining that Daniel grew in the gift of fasting. Gifts, they don't grow. The gift of fasting can never grow, but we grow in the gift. So Daniel grew in the gift to an extent that he became the gift of fasting. So when they invited him to sit with the king and eat, he said, I'm not coming because he knew the moment he sits, no one will eat. He is the gift of fasting. They took him and they placed him in the den of lions. Lions could not eat him because they received him as a gift of fasting. They automatically began to fast. That's why when he was removed, the people that were placed there, before they touched the ground. If we claim that Daniel was communicating with the lions, the Bible says the second group that was placed there, before they touched the ground, they were already eaten by the lions, which means Daniel had no time to communicate with them. It was his gift operating and manipulating the whole system in the den of lions. It's like Joseph. Joseph was so powerful in the dream world to an extent that we hear that when he got into the, in the prison, they had dreams. So there are people in life that if I become the gift of prophecy, if I come to this church, the moment I leave, many people start prophesying. So it depends with how much time you put yourself in the gift and how you grow in the gift. Amen. Now, after that level where you are able to see visions at any time, there is a level what we call trance. 
where your spirit can come out from your body and experience and be part of the vision. You are not only seeing, you are experiencing while you are awake. The Bible says when Gehazi followed the king Naaman and he took offerings from him, the moment he came back, Elisha said, when you went there, my spirit went with you. That's a trance. I don't know if you understand that. So when you hear me saying, prophet passion is no longer here. I am in wala wala, wala wala, I see this, I see this. My spirit is actually there while I am here. I don't know if you understand that. It's called a trance. But it all starts from dreams. And you build your dreams into visions of the night. From visions of the night, you build to visions of the day. Visions of the day, you operate in a place where you control the gift. You can, you can be sensitive. You can just turn your spiritual eyes to check how many angels are here. How many demons are here. You, you can actually see. Because visions, they, they operate in the level of seeing. So the more you see, the more you have more knowledge, the more you practice, the more you know how to control the gift. If you have less practice, you take more time to develop yourself in the gift. So you can't like hear God today and when you have a problem after two months, you pray for God to speak to you. When you have a situation after six weeks, you pray that God will speak to you. It must be a daily routine. It should be a lifestyle every day. You should know we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Right? We are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are spiritual beings. Then there's the last level that you are no longer operating as a human being. When I was here last time, I taught about the main class the angelic class, and the God class. You know the teaching, right? Yeah. And if you are in the angelic class, you can come to a place where you can shake hands with an angel. Yeah. You can fight like Jacob, physically, with an angel. And an angel will break your leg physically. Your amen is still loud. I didn't hear that. So there is a level that when you grow, you are no longer a man, though you are a man. That's why they call you men of God. There is this God part of you that has become more real in you. That when people look at Moses, they see glory from his face. They have to cover him with a blanket. They can't look at him. There is glory. Why? He is in the God class. In the angelic class, that's when you speak with the tongues of angels. Though I speak with the tongues of men, with the tongues of angels, you communicate. You bump into an angel, boom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it becomes a real world to you. You communicate with angels. You sit down with angels. The Bible says your forefathers ate angels' food. You can sit and eat with angels. You know Abraham did that, right? You know that, right? Abraham ate with angels. So you have to develop yourself from dreams into visions of the night. Into, uh, open your Bibles in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. King James Version is my best version. So it's dreams and visions of the night, visions of the day. Sorry? Oh yeah. Control the gift, thank you. Uh, controlling the gift, becoming the gift, and being real in that world. Where the spiritual world is no longer spiritual to you, it becomes like tangible world to you. Where when Elijah is about to be taken to heaven, you see a, a horse from heaven. Not a spiritual vision, but it becomes an open vision. It's open. You can see a horse, you can see a chariot, you can see a wild wind. You are not closing your eyes. It's, it's a real. And a wild wind will take Elijah in front of your eyes and it's gone. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. What does it say? I 
I will stand upon my... Who is standing? Me, right? You, right? I will stand upon my... Watch. Uh-huh. And set me upon the tower and will watch. Set myself upon the tower. Tower means a high place to see. Uh-huh. And will watch to see what he will say unto me. I will watch to see. Watch to see. What is he watching to see? And what I shall answer when I am reproved. I'll watch to see what? I watch to see what? What he, will say unto me. what he will say. How can you see what he will say? Is it broken English? Remember, I'm still learning English. Is it broken English? No. Is it correct one? Yes. So how can we explain that I'm, I'm watching to see what he shall say? I'm not seeing what he's saying. I'm watching to see what he shall say. Do you, do you get that one? How do you explain that in your English version? I will stand upon my watch, upon my tower, and I will watch to see what he will say. I'm not seeing what he will do. I'm watching to see what he will say. Do we see words or we hear words? So I will hear what he will say, right? But the Bible is saying, I'll watch to see what he will say. What does it mean? Huh? God speaks in images. So before someone opens his mouth, that's why the Bible is saying, what he shall is future tense, right? So before he says it, you have to see it. Before he says, I have a black cat, you have to see a black cat. That's when you hear me saying, I'm in your house, I'm seeing a black hat. Ah, how do you know that? <laughs> you have to watch to see. So the question is, how do you watch to see? Daniel chapter number four. I forgot the verse, Jesus Christ. There is a verse that says, um, Daniel was seeing visions of his head. In the visions of his head. Someone will Google that for me. It should be around Daniel 4 or 7 between those two. All right, Daniel chapter 4, verse 13. I saw in the visions of my head. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. A watcher is a type of an angel. We're going to deal with that in the next class. And a holy one is also another type of angels. We're going to deal with that in the next class. But I saw in the visions of my head, that's meditation. Visions of my head, it's meditation. Meditation is to think deep on something that you want answers from. I have also another book on my website called uh, uh, The Power of Meditation or The Mystery of Meditation, something like that which teaches you how to meditate. So visions of your head, it's a kind of meditation that takes you into the spiritual world to begin to see things in the realms of the spirit. You cannot meditate without thinking, without your mind. Are we together? So it starts with your mind. So it is a practice. You read the Bible. You meditate on it. You read the Bible. You meditate. You read. You practice that. The more you practice that, you are, you, you are, you are creating a ground in your mind to operate in the world of visions. You can't just get up today and you start seeing visions every time. It's a practice. You have to have practical work every day. 
you you read the bible you meditate you read the bible you meditate you read the bible you meditate you until the spirit starts taking over and taking over and taking over until you just close your eyes and start seeing visions open your eyes you see things in the realms of the spirit life becomes easy for you amen, amen. give me questions before we continue and go deeper to another level yes so growing in this gift you have to um do you have to meditate in order big time. to big time meditate you need to meditate remember what i also taught you clear your mind don't allow anger things that has to do with anger issues and forgiveness uh hatred those things they cripple your mind to an extent that you don't give room for spiritual stuff to get into your mind are we together yeah. so clear all those things you can't live in your past if someone betrayed you that was then it's not today you have a new life today if someone mistreated you if you are abused if someone did something wrong to you leave it in the past right you have a clear mind forgive everyone clear everyone i'm not saying go back and be friends with them it's a choice but i will not do that i will just focus in my happiness for now i'm clear my mind is perfect i'm clear and then i read the bible because all visions are connected to the bible check all visions of all the men of god in the bible they are like daniel visions john the revelator visions they see same angels they see things that look alike because god let me give you a mystery god can never speak outside of your imagination god is able to do exceedingly abundantly above your your imagination right what if you don't imagine he doesn't do anything right mm -hmm. zero times 1 million yeah. zero times 2 billion yeah. so if god have got 2 billion and you have zero can anything happen so god can never speak outside your imagination can i go deeper right now do you know god does not have beard you know that right uh -uh. <laughs> someone gave you an imagination of god with a long white beard <laughs> and because your imagination have got god with a long beard if you are to see god god uses that picture i didn't hear that do you know there are angels with the six wings and the angels with the two wings and the angels without wings we know that right god can never show you an angel with 10 wings because he can only operate according to you the powerful imagination let me explain better god does not have shape do we agree so if you put God in a triangle, he appears to you in a triangle. Ah, you're not getting it. God is bound by your imagination. So Daniel to see a vision of an angel called the Holy Ones, or angels called uh, thrones, he had to see visions of his head meaning what is in your head determines how god will speak to you in a vision uh, let me go backwards god does not have beard that goes to the ground white long beard but because your imagination is like that let me go backwards there is this guy i forgot his name he appeared in this yet movie of jesus christ with some beard here you know the the guy what's his name jimmy jim for you to see visions ask people that say i saw jesus in a vision he was that man with a beard you know that right a lot of people god used your imagination to speak to you come what color is this one purple right 
Is this color blue? So God can never speak to you that this is blue. If this color is blue in heaven, God can't speak to you that it is blue. Because the moment God says, can you see this blue color on here, you'll be confused. So if it is purple to you, God will speak this color as purple. If it is red to you, God will speak and use this color as red to you. So what limits your vision is what is in your mind. So Jacob took a ship and cleared the waters because he made a deal with his father-in-law that if they give birth to this kind of sheep, you will take them. So he made sure that when they are drinking, what they see is clear so that they can give, to, give birth to a breed of certain sheep. So he controlled what they produced by how they were seeing. So what you see is determined by what is already in your mind. So if your mind is blank, God can never speak to you. Thank you. If your mind is blank, God cannot speak to you. God uses symbols. God would speak to Ezekiel and say, what do you say? He says, I see a basket full of fruits. And God says, no, this is Israel. God uses things that are physical to speak things that are not physical. So for you to grow in visions, clear your mind. And don't ever, don't always believe that what you believe is true. Your amen is too loud, I didn't hear that. <laughs> don't ever believe that what you know is true. Because not all true knowledge you have is true. It can be true to you, but it's not true. Are we together? Amen. Because what can limit you is what you know. Do you know all of us, we are desiring to prophesy, right? Yes. Do you know we are desiring to preach? Yes. Have you ever desired to walk past the walls? Yes. <laughs> Have you ever desired to go under the ground? Yes. So God is never going to use you to walk on top of the air. Because you have never imagined yourself walking on the air. Visions are bound to your belief system. Let me explain. Do you know that doubt is not a sin? Doubt is not a sin. Doubt is a question. You are questioning things. So when God was doubted by Gideon, he proved himself. Doubt simply means I'm not fully convinced. Unbelief is a sin. God rebuked them because of their unbelief. If you totally don't believe, it means you are 100% saying it's wrong. But in doubt, you are saying, give me a sign to believe. I wish someone can be here. So the greatest power of God, if you check, was not seen by people with faith. It was seen by people that doubted. When Gideon doubted God, God moved. So when you hear people saying, God, if you are really the one, do this for me. How many people pray that prayer? God, if you are really there, do this for me. And God will always do it. Don't do it again. <laughs> it was in the past. It's for spiritual babies. God, if you are really there, show yourself like this. If you are really there, stop the rain, and the rain will stop. Because the doubt, it's a question. Are we together? Yes. But the unbelief blocks you to operate in the things of God. It grieves God. If you don't believe, you are, you are putting a conclusion that it's, it's not God. Do you know God doesn't have a color? You know God doesn't have color, right? You know that, right? Oh, you didn't know? No, God does not have color. God does not have shape. God is not tall. God is not short. God is not fat. God is not slim. He is not a slim fit. <laughs> God doesn't have shape. But he appears to you according to your belief. If you believe he's tall and his legs passes the sky, in a vision you'll be looking at him like this. 
to someone he appears in your height but god is not your height you know that right so your vision is more powerful by what you believe in so if you limit your belief system you are limiting your visions you are limiting yourself from seeing more i'm going to teach you more and i'm going to scare you in the next class when i teach you about angels but the angels that if they appear here you can laugh some if they appear you all run away from me that is why there are angels that people cannot see now hear this as i take the other question what time am i finishing this one 9 15. i forgot what i wanted to say <laughs> what was the last word i said Some angels, you can't see them because if you see them, you think it's a demon. Wow. The angels, if they appear here, you say, this is a demon. I'll teach you about angels. So God wants to speak to you, but your knowledge is limiting God. God wants to open visions for you, but you don't have faith. You have unbelief. Therefore, unbelief grieves and stops God to speak to you. Another question. I have a follow-up question. Um, so you said God is put down by your imagination. How do you grow your imagination then? Or how do you build it so God... Don't will... only believe in what you believe. Oppose what you believe, one. Question your belief. Question your belief. Number two. Grow your belief system. Believe in other things you have never believed in. Believe into the supernatural, into the unknown. Believe that you are going to divide yourself into 30 people and preach in 30 churches every Sunday. Example. Don't try this at all. <laughs> try to believe that God is going to use you like you have never done in the past. Be a pioneer of something new. So don't only say, I want to prophesy like prophet person. You have just limited God. Wow. Say, I want to prophesy in a way that you have never been heard on earth. I want to do better than what prophet person is doing. That's where you can start. Don't, don't start from where I started. Start from where I am right now. And go better, deeper. Elijah, John the Baptist came baptizing people with water. Whoever did it in the past. Nobody. Moses made the manna to rain from heaven. Whoever did it. Nobody. He separated water into two. <laughs> so, once you stretch your mind, God is able to do something. One last question. So what we call deja vu, is it considered a vision? No. Or? Deja vu is that you were in a trance. Your spirit went into the future and experienced it and it came back into the now. When you got into the future, you were shocked to see what you already experienced before. It falls under the teaching of predestination. Predestination, you are walking in a destiny which you already walked before. That's why God is saying, before these kids are born, Jacob I love, but Esau I hate. What did they do? To God they already finished. God declares the end from the beginning. God already saw everything that they did on earth until they left heaven. Remember, God does not number. God does not count God numbers. To count is to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right? How old are you? 21, 22, 23, you are what? Counting. Numbering is 30, 29, 28, going down. So when you are saying, I'm, I'm 21 years old, God is saying you are, you are 40 years old. You are 39 years, you are 2 years old, you are 1 years old, you are dead. God is coming from the back, he, he declares from the end, coming into the beginning but you are coming from the beginning going into the end so deja vu god took you into into what will happen to you but to him it already happened so to god you are rewinding 
into your life you are fast forwarding. All right, so visions are powerful and they are from God. And for some people to see visions, it takes the willingness of a person who have keys. Remember today I was supposed to unlock you, right? Yes. But we said we are going to do it tomorrow, right? Yes. Elisha only chose in his heart to place his hands upon the eyes of his servant. And what happened? The eyes of the servant were opened and the servant saw angels. So, if you want to see in the spirit, you don't have to do a long chain of going to God. God, open my eyes. Go to a man who is able to do that. Do you know that the poor saw Jesus face to face and he became blind? Did Jesus open his eyes? What did Jesus say? Go to a man called Ananias. You open your eyes. Jesus is referring him to men, but you are going to Jesus. <laughs> Open my eyes, Lord. God is saying, go back. There's a guy called Prophet Passion in angry generation. <laughs> Gehazi only received sight from the prophet. So it takes a man who is in the office to operate. The Bible speaks of a word called ask. A-S-K. Ask, seek, knock. Right? You ask and it's given to you. But you don't know where it is because it's hidden. So you seek. You find it, but it's locked somewhere. So you begin to knock the door. You are knocking because you don't have keys. Someone inside who is already inside is the one that has to open for you. So it is only the one that is operating in the gift that you want to operate with who has to open the door for you to get in. God is not there. It's a man that's there. Give and it shall be given back unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall a man, not God, shall a man come and give unto you, not God. There are things God will use through men, and there are things God will do through God. That's why the Bible says, and the child grew in the favor of men and in the favor of God. If men cannot favor you, no matter how much God favors you, you will never make it. Imagine your boss doesn't want to see you. You have the favor of God, but he doesn't have favor for you. He will never promote you. So it takes a person with keys to unlock your destiny and put something new in your life. So God is going to bless many of you here and give you the prophetic ability, especially tomorrow, when your eyes are open to see. But you can only limit God by what you believe. You can limit God. Do you know, example, do you know, it's what we're going to be teaching in the next class, do you know there are angels that are black? I'm not talking about black as in my dark skin. Black, black, black as in your black t-shirt. Obvious, if you see that angel, you're going to run. <laughs> That's a demon there. The angels that are just light. Light, you just see light, you can't even see the face. We'll talk about angels in the next. But unless your mind stretches to that level, you are locking yourself to get into that level. John was, he had a voice. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1, I, John, was in the spirit on the Lord's day. John 1, uh, Revelation 1 verse 9. He was in the spirit, right? But in chapter 4, he had a voice saying, a, a door was opened and a voice said to him, come up here. He is in the spirit, but he is now being told to come up, which means there are levels in the spirit. And when he got into the door, he was told, this one that you are about to see, no man is allowed to see it. Do not write it down, for it is not permitted in the realm of man. What does it mean? It means John was no longer operating like a man. Because what he is about to see, no man is allowed to see it. So unless you upgrade yourself, you can never see some things in the realms of the spirit. Last question before we close. How do you grow on the gift? Practice. The more you practice, the more you uh, invest yourself in it, the more you read the Bible, the more you hear teachings of people that are already powerful in the gift, 
the more you hear testimonies of other people, the more you are inspired by other people, you are challenged by other people, things like that. That's why mainly God uses young people more than old people. Because God wants to challenge other people. You say, oh, if a 15-year-old can do this, what about me? If a 25-year-old can do this, what about me? Something you have, to, you have to be challenged sometimes to grow in the gift. God sometimes makes you feel like, ah, what wrong am I doing that I can't do these things? Someone just comes from the world and starts prophesying big. I had a problem in my church in uh, Sense of God, 2001. I just came from nowhere, nowhere. I started prophesying like hmm, crazy. There are people that have been in church for years. Before I was born, they were in the church. They've never heard God like that. They hated me. It became a problem in the church. Why? Sometimes God raises a person to challenge you so that you can be better. But some people, instead of being better, they yet or they oppose the move of God. So we have, uh, I, I have four minutes left. I want you to tell me what you learned. Bush, yeah. Everybody close your books. Everybody, close your book, close your book, close your book. Yes? So I learned that when you really desire something, mm -hmm. that, you know, the first step is to ask. And when you have asked, you have to seek it out. And when you seek it out, you knock on a door. For somebody that has a key in the room of the Spirit to open the door for you that's on the other side. Powerful. Another one. What did you learn? I learned that God will only reveal to himself to you um, in the expanse of your imagination. So if you have a small imagination, um, God will not be able to move um, as he would. Another one. You. What did you learn? Um, I like that. I learned that we ourselves are limiting what God has for us, that if we just open up our mind, that he will... Speak to us. Anyone to tell me how you can grow in the gift? Meditation? Clear your mind? Spend more time with God? Forgive others? Read scriptures? Challenge by others? Private, uh, private practice? Removing anger and stuff like that. Someone was learning here. How do you become the gift? How do you become the gift? Give it the mic. It starts by levels. First is like uh, dreams to visions in the night and then visions in the day. And then you go to controlling the gift, and then you are being in the gift, and then you become the gift. Powerful, clap your hands. Wow. <laughs> become the gift by spending much of your time in the gift. Gifts, they don't grow, but we grow in the gift. The next lesson is going to be interesting. If you can pray, there's 10 minutes break, pray. And those that are watching, watch us in 10 minutes' time. Pray. Talk to God. Speak in tongues. Prepare. You don't know, you may see an angel. Amen. Thank you so much. Our second lesson has come to an end, but there is more. So please join us after the 10-minute break for a lesson on angels. It's going to be super insightful and exciting. So come back after the break. <laughs>